The Earth is different than the other planets in one key way. It contains life, and life on Earth is very diverse. Let's take a look at the six kingdoms of life. We will look at archaea, bacteria, protista, plants, fungi, and animals. Let's get started. These blue, green, and yellow colors found within the Grand Prismatic Springs at Yellowstone National Park are created by tiny single-cell organisms called archaea. Let's take a look at archaea. Archaea is one of the six kingdoms of life. For many years, archaea was called archaeobacteria, but has since been changed to archaea due to the fact that archaea are not bacteria. In fact, archaea have more in common with the domain eukarya than bacteria. Archaea do share many similarities with bacteria, which may cause you to think that they are the same organism, but they are not. For example, they have the following in common with bacteria. They are unicellular. They are prokaryotes, which means they don't have a nucleus or membrane-bound organelles. They reproduce asexually using binary fission. Their cells contain ribosomes, cytoplasm, but you won't find membrane-bound organelles like a mitochondria. However, the membrane structures of archaea and bacteria are very different. The cell walls are also very different and the enzymes that read the genetic code in archaea are different than the enzymes that read the genetic code in bacteria. Many archaea have the ability to live in extreme environments like deep hydrothermal vents or in hot springs or on glacial ice and in very salty solutions. These types of archaea are called extremophiles. Check out some of the extreme places you will find archaea. However, they can also be found living next to bacteria in your gut. The name archaea means ancient things because archaea have been around for a long, long time. Interesting fact, to date no archaea has been found to cause disease in humans. So in summary, archaea are single-celled prokaryotic organisms in which some have the ability to live in extreme environments. These foods have in common? They all use bacteria in order to produce their unique taste. Bacteria are small unicellular organisms found almost everywhere on Earth. They are found on cutting boards, in this cow's gut, on your skin, and even in the soil. However, not all bacteria look the same. Some are round, some are rod-shaped, and some have very unusual shapes. In general, bacteria can be classified according to three basic shapes, round or spherical, rod-like, and spiral or twisted. Bacteria play a very important role on Earth. Bacteria are decomposers. They perform a valuable service as the Earth's cleanup crew. They help break down once living organisms and help recycle important nutrients. However, some bacteria are pathogens, which means they are harmful and cause disease, such as strep throat, tooth decay, salmonella, just to name a few. However, life on Earth would not exist the way it does without these tiny organisms. Cell. A bacteria cell is a prokaryotic cell, which means it does not have a nucleus or membrane-bound organelles. Bacteria are made up of a single cell and reproduce by fission or by forming spores. Many times you will see bacteria cells in colonies. Here are several bacteria cells grouped together. Here's a picture of bacteria cell under an electron microscope. A bacteria cell has an outer covering called a capsule or a slime layer. Bacteria with a thick outer capsule are called gram-positive, and bacteria with a thin outer covering are gram-negative. In addition, bacteria have a cell wall and a cell membrane which makes up the inner layer of this outer covering. Next, you will find cytoplasm inside a bacteria cell. It is a liquid substance and is the location of many biochemical reactions. You will also find ribosomes inside a bacteria cell. Some are found in the cytoplasm and other ribosomes are attached to the inner layer of the capsule or the cell membrane. 
you will also find genetic material inside a bacteria cell. Although it's missing a DNA, you will find most of this genetic material in a nucleode, which is a single strand of DNA that is folded. And you will also find circular strands of DNA called plasmids. In addition, you will find gas vacuoles, and some bacteria have a whip-like tail called a flagellum. And other bacteria have pili, which are small fibers that sprout from the cell surface and help the bacteria attach to certain cells. What is this giant kelp? A single cell euglena, slime mold, and paramecium all have in common. They would all be found in Kingdom Protista. Protists are an interesting kingdom of life. You may have heard that Kingdom Protista is the junk drawer kingdom. Kind of like the drawer at home that you have a little bit of everything in it. Let me help explain why. You will find single cell organisms like diatoms, multicellular organisms that practice photosynthesis like sea lettuce, and a single cell organism like paramecium. If you have a eukaryotic organism and it is not a plant, animal, or fungi, it is classified as a protist. All protists have the following common characteristics. They are eukaryotic, which means that genetic material is found inside a nucleus and they contain membrane-bound organelles. Most prefer an aquatic or moist location. Probably the easiest way to think of protists is a eukaryotic organism that lacks the structures to be classified as a plant, animal, or fungi. This kingdom is so diverse that scientists group protists as plant-like, such as algae, animal-like, such as paramecium, and fungi-like, like like this slime mold. I'd like to review two characteristics that help you get an understanding of the diversity of this kingdom. Let's first look at movement. Some protists, like ciliates, move using tiny hairs called cilia. Paramecium move this way. Other protists move by oozing along. They use a pseudopod. For example, an amoeba moves this way. And then a euglena are protists that move using a flagellum, which is a tail-like structure. And then some protists don't move, like kelp. And then diatoms just float along. Reproduction. Some protists reproduce asexually, like an amoeba, an algae. Slime molds reproduce using spores, which is a type of asexual reproduction. Arcella reproduce by budding. Some protists reproduce both sexually and asexually, like a paramecium. So in summary, if you have an organism with a nucleus and is not a plant, animal, or fungi, then you have a protist. Plants come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Plants belong in the plant kingdom. It's also called Kingdom Plantae. Let's take a look at some common characteristics of this kingdom. The plant kingdom is made up of multicellular eukaryotic organisms. Eukaryotic means that they have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. They are also autotrophs, which means that they are self-feeders. Plants combine carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight to produce oxygen and glucose in a process called photosynthesis. The glucose is then used to create ATP during cellular respiration. The cells of plants have a cell wall made of cellulose. This cell wall provides protection and shape. Most plant cells have a large central vacuum. There's a huge variety of plants found on Earth. There are roughly 500,000 species of plants. Two major categories are vascular and non-vascular. Vascular plants have vascular tissue that allows them to grow larger in size. There are two types of vascular tissue. Xylem transports water, and phloem transports sugar throughout the plant. This allows some vascular plants to grow very large. Non-vascular plants move water by osmosis. This limits the size of non-vascular plants. A very common example would be moss. You can also classify plants into plants with flowers and plants that do not have flowers. Angiosperms are plants that have flowers. They contain a carpal and a stigma, 
style, and over. Most vegetables and fruits we like to eat are angiosperms. Gymnosperms do not flower and rely on airborne pollen to reproduce. M many trees, like pines and fir trees, are gymnosperms. The kingdom fungi is made up of mushrooms, mold, yeast, and lichen. Fungi are very important to life on Earth, and many work with plants in a symbiotic relationship. The following are some basic fungi facts. Fungi have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles, so they are considered eukaryotic. Most fungi are heterotrophs and get their energy from other organisms. Most are unicellular, but some, like yeast, is unicellular. Fungi cannot move about. Fungi may look like plants, but they are not plants, and they are different from plants in several ways. Almost all fungi do not have chlorophyll, so they cannot practice photosynthesis. They reproduce with spores, not seeds. Many fungi have cell walls made of chitin instead of cellulose like plants. Molds have cell walls of cellulose, so they are an, are an exception. Many fungi break down decaying matter and absorb nutrients using a network of fibers called hyphae. Hyphae are tube-like structures that grow and cover a food source, which allows them to digest and absorb nutrients. Many fungi, like mushrooms, have a visible fruit which is easily seen, and a mass of hyphae called a mycelium, and most likely this mycelium is hidden from view. There are four main types of fungi. The first is zygomycota, and many of these fungi are molds. They produce spores on the tips of their hyphae. A common example is bread mold. Next are club fungi. They have a dome-shaped part where reproductive spores are produced. Common examples are mushrooms. Next are sac fungi. These fungi produce reproductive spores in a sac-like structure. Common examples include yeast, mildew, and lichen. And finally, you have the imperfect fungi. This group is like your junk drawer of fungi. The fungi that don't really, really fit anywhere else go here. However, each of these fungi reproduce asexually. Athlete's foot is an example. And finally, fungi can reproduce both sexually and asexually. Animals are a very diverse group of organisms. They vary from a huge well to an insect. Let's first begin with what all animals do have in common. First, they're all multicellular organisms made from eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are cells that have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. Next, they are all consumers, or heterotrophs, which means that they must eat other organisms in order to obtain energy. They all use the protein collagen. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body, and it's found in bones, muscles, skin, and tendons. It is the substance that holds the body together. Animals are diploid, meaning each cell has a homologous pair of chromosomes. This means that they have two sets of chromosomes, one from mom and another from dad. And animals develop from an embryo. Scientists have named and described over 1.5 million species of animals. There are more than 35 animal phylum, but more than 95% of all animals can be found in the following nine phyla. The first eight phyla contain invertebrates, which are animals that do not develop a backbone from a notochord. Up first, phylum periphera, or the sponges. Next is phylum annelida. These are segmented worms like earthworms and leeches. Next, we have phylum nematoda, and these are the roundworms. Next, phylum platyhelminths, and these are flatworms. Examples include planaria and tapeworms. 
mollusks, or mollusca, and these include snails, slugs, squids, and other relatives. Next, we have the arthropods, or arthropoda. This is the largest animal phylum, and all arthropods contain segmented appendages and an exoskeleton. Next, we have the echinoderms, and these include sea stars and sea urchins. And then finally, of the invertebrates is nadaria, which are known for stinging cells. Examples include the jellyfish and sea anemones. Now we have the chordates, which make up only around 5% of all animals. All chordates have a notochord and a hollow nerve cord, and higher chordates, like vertebrates, contain a backbone. A subphylum of chordates include the vertebrates. There are five main classes of vertebrates, and you may be familiar with them. First, we have fish, then amphibians, then reptiles, birds, and mammals. So there we go, the nine main phylum of animals. And remember, kindness multiplies kindness. Be kind to someone today.